What's good, everybody? Welcome, welcome to The Doe Show. Happy Thursday. Man, this week's going by quick, I tell you. Uh, hey, look, this week we are talking about active trading here in uh, on The Doe Show. We cover everything from personal finance, retirement, retirement investing. Next week's going to all be about your number. I want to get you guys geeked out on knowing what you need, whether you're investing in real estate, whether you're investing in retirement, long-term, short-term, whatever it is. I want to get you guys focused on the number so you can go bug whoever's helping you out with your investments uh, to give you the number, man. If you're one of our customers, we work that out for you. Of course, we're Jazz Wealth uh, Registered Financial Advisors, SEC registered, by the way. We Oh, you probably can't see the letter. We got our letter. We put the letter from the SEC up there on the wall. Maybe we could try to make it a little closer so it's obvious, guys. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, fiduciary financial advisors, we manage our own portfolios. Blah, blah, blah. We uh, do a lot of long-term retirement investing, but we help you with your number. We help you with personal finance. We are not an investing service. We do handle the um, investments for you, uh, but we are not just a sort of set it and forget it service. We want to help you with your personal finances, anything we can do with your workplace plans, uh, 401ks, 457s, whatever they might be. Uh, we'll help you with any financial advice you need along the way. And of course, we'll teach you in our classes that we're having tonight, actually. Uh, Wine and Wealth is a, one of our classes that we're doing tonight on um, uh, the stock market and why you want it to fall uh, with the geeky numbers and all that good stuff. I hope you'll check us out at Jazz Wealth. Anyways, that's the end of my sales pitch. We're doing active trading this week here uh, on The Doe Show. And so far this week, uh, we started with trading plans, by far the most important thing. I hope those of you that actively trade, whether it's on Robinhood or whether it's just you know in a brokerage account and you do your own thing, um, I certainly hope you have a trading plan because I can promise you after, uh, I did a, a research too. Um, I kept every trading plan that anyone ever showed me. Uh, I've taught thousands of people all over the world and I dug around in my Dropbox uh, two ni last night and uh, found that I had 5,800 trading plans, Word documents, images, cell phone pictures. They were crappy because we didn't, you know, cell phones weren't what they were when I did this. Uh, but I found 5,800 plus uh, trading plans from people that laid out what it is they want to do with their trading. I'm not talking about investing or long-term stuff. I'm talking about the day traders, the day-to-day -day traders, uh, and then what they call swing traders or more active traders there. Uh, so you got to have a trading plan. We covered that on Monday. Uh, Tuesday, we went through the product options from uh, stocks, uh, futures, options, Forex, uh, futures, options, things like that. Kind of covered a technical and fundamental analysis to kind of get your, you straight there. Remember, uh, technical analysis or fundamental analysis tells you why you might want to buy or sell something. Technical analysis tells you when you might want to buy or sell something. We'll cover some more of that here today. And then Wednesday, we talked about leverage. We went over uh, margin, margin calls, maintenance margin. Uh, so we got you covered there. And today we're gonna talk about tracking your performance. If you have a good plan, you understand the risk that you're putting out there as an active trader, uh, and you uh, get to work, well, the next step is to track your investments. You have to know that if you have strategy one, two, and three, you, you wanna know if they're successful or not. And so today what we're gonna do, I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm a geek out here. I'm gonna bust out an old trading uh, spreadsheet that we used to use. Uh, I'm not gonna, don't ask me for it. I'm not gonna go emailing this to everybody. It's an old school uh, Excel spreadsheet, like had to get it to work in the newest version of Excel all night last night uh, kind of thing. So um, the point is you wanna track every last detail. Now, thankfully, there are lots of offerings out there from different subscription services to even brokerage firms um, a lot of the platforms are really good as far as tracking your statistics. For example, if you're a day trader or run algorithms on uh, TradeStation, they're incredible. They do great with their, um, you know, going back and seeing how everything did, time of day, all this great stuff. Uh, they're good. You could build your own thing inside of TD. I believe that's still an option. Um, Interactive Brokers is like the... Uh, fighter pilot of all of them, so uh, also very good there. There's also standalone services where you can link up your accounts and they will track everything for you. You can kind of customize everything, uh, but you know, that's down the road. So if you're just getting started, most of you are saying, hey, I'm an active trader. I buy and sell stuff. Come to find out, I never knew I needed a plan. I never knew I needed anything or to track any of this stuff. So what do I track? Let's go through it. The first thing you want to track is your wins versus your losses, right? That's pretty obvious. That's a given. You're tracking the total number of wins uh, plus the total number of losses divided by the number of wins. So your win-loss ratio 
How many more times do you win versus losing? Uh, ver do, do you lose? You take your wins, you divide them by your wins plus your losses, right? Simple math formula, a spreadsheet, or whether you're building something yourself, that's the first thing you want to know is your win-loss ratio. If you are getting 50% of your trades right, you're actually doing just as well as everybody does, right? Uh, it is very rare, unless you are what's called a hyper scalper uh, or an options trader, it is very rare that a stock trader will average better than 50%. And that's why on Twitter, I post these analysts. When these analysts make their calls, uh, most people just sort of look over that. Some of them are phenomenal. Others of them, not so much. I just tweeted today uh, about an analyst uh, that uh, downgraded the gap, right? Uh, from JP Morgan. So go on our Twitter page if you would, follow us there uh, if you're interested in that sort of thing. I also tweeted why the markets are lower today. We're going to cover that on the closing beat, but is it because people are fearful? No, there's an actual reason why the markets fell uh, about halfway through the morning today. And uh, it got talked about a little bit on TV, but that's not their job. They don't focus on that. They focus on the why. What's the headline reason? There's no headline reason. It's right there on the charts. You can see it. So we'll show you later. Uh, but anyways, the statistics of these analysts, such a big deal. So if a guy's really good at picking stocks, he's going to be 50, uh, 55 to maybe 65% successful. That's it. So you don't need to be successful 80, 90% of the times on your trades. If you're a hyper scalper and you're in and out or you're using options, then unfortunately, or then fortunately, your win, uh, winners versus losers is going to be uh, much higher. Your batting average, essentially. You're going to be batting 80, 90%. Um, and that's just how that game works. Next, you want to know your win-loss ratio. So your win-loss ratio. And this, that, look, ratio is like the biggest word I've used all week. <laughs> win-loss ratio is how much more do you win versus you lose. So it's great that you know I, uh, I win 50% of my trades. You could still be a losing trader. In fact, you could win 80% of your trades and still be a losing trader. So your win-loss ratio is just the total of all your wins plus your losses, right? So uh, how do we have that kind of set up here? Total, I'm sorry, total of all, your, did I put plus? Total of all your wins divided by your total number of losses. There you go. And that's going to give you a ratio of, of 1.2, 2.5, whatever it ends up being. These two numbers together we talked about on Monday a little bit. You know, it's, it's sort of the geeky side of things, but those are the numbers that mean the most. It's, it's like the most important thing out of the whole deal. You want to know how often do you win and how much more do you win versus how much more versus what you lose, hopefully, right? If anyone is, let's say some of you, I talked to a kid last night, uh, it's a nice guy. He wanted to consider the world of trading. And uh, so I'm like, okay, cool. You're young. You could try it. Go, go for it. And he said, what do I do? Where do I start? And I said, you just start by doing, right? Learn how everything works before you develop a strategy. Anyways, I started talking about tracking the number of winners versus the number of losers and then knowing how much more you win versus lose. And he's like, ah, well, what did we do with that? Like he all of a sudden lost interest. I'm like, wait, what do, what do you think trading is? Do you think it's, it's like what you see on TV, all that stuff? And he's like, yeah, I just want to like buy cryptocurrencies. I just want to buy stocks and stuff and just kind of, you know, figure out good times to buy them and then sell them. I'm like, okay, that's great. But how are you going to know if you're successful? And he's like, well, cause I'll make money. And it was just a real sort of beginner way to look at it. Nothing wrong with that. We all have to start somewhere. I didn't pick on him or anything, but it's like in business, you can't just say, I'm going to go out and sell golf balls. Okay, well, how do you know which one sells better? Well, how do you know how many more you sell in January versus maybe July, right? What's the difference? So you want to know these two numbers. And in my opinion, these two go at the top of anything you are doing. I'll show you the spreadsheet in a moment. Uh, I put them right at the top so that, um, you know, that makes, that makes it very obvious, your stats immediately. Okay, number three, where'd you find the trade? Where'd you find it? Ah, come on, I wish I could, I, you know, I played drums all my life and I can't like speak and write, it kills me. Where'd you find that trade that you just took? Okay, here's the thing. Uh, finding trades is like finding inventory, right? So if you have a business and your inventory consists of old barn wood tables that, or pieces of wood that you then make into tables, 
finding inventory to make those tables is your biggest problem. It's the same in trading. So you may want to trade everything all day, every day, but finding opportunities is really tricky. And so maybe all of those are not yours, me 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 meaning maybe you found a trade on your own. Maybe a friend called you and said, hey, I'm gonna trade this in a little bit. I think it looks good. Uh, maybe you develop a network of traders. You do meetups and things like that. Uh, maybe you watch TV. You could use social sentiment. That's very popular. I mentioned that a couple times this week. And so maybe those trades come from different directions. You want to track that. Was it your trade, someone else's, social media? Did you see it on TV? You know what I'm saying. So that's one that you wanna check there as well. From there, you wanna know the entry of the trade. I wanna know the time, I wanna know the day, I wanna know the, 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 uh, the reason that you entered right there. So it could be that you entered the trade as soon as the markets uh, open uh, that day uh, because it did something special, the price was lower, the price was higher, whatever. You wanna be able to track that, I'll show you about that in a little bit. Number five, I wanna know the strategy. What's the strategy? So you bought it because it triggered some strategy you'd pre-developed. Maybe your strategy was, I buy stocks that are down more than 3% relative to yesterday's close, but on the open. So when the stock opens, if it's 3% lower, I take a shot and I buy it. That's okay, right? So you have the time because you buy it at 9.30 Eastern, right when the market's open. You have a strategy, you buy stocks that fall by 3% on the open. Uh, that makes sense. And so uh, that's part of it, right? So you know that that strategy there, okay? And then uh, the, the other thing, uh, just as a basic kind of a starting point, I wanna know the exit. When you got out of the trade, did you uh, get out because it hit a stop loss? Did you get out um, early? Did you get out because it was a profit target, profit target number one, number two? Uh, did you get out because it went way past your profit target? I wanna know the exit because that's where you're gonna start to fine tune in the future, okay? So that's just a few things that uh, I want you to track. And if you want, I like this one here, number seven, errors. Human error. It is going to be very common that you develop a strategy to buy when certain things happen at certain times of day with so many shares and all this stuff, and then emotion's gonna kick in. Um, your internet's gonna go down. Uh, someone's gonna call you and you're gonna get distracted. You're gonna hit the wrong button and buy too many shares. Things are going to happen. When the internet goes out here, I panic. I mean, you wanna see somebody jump up and make stuff happen. To me, that's a problem, right? It can cause errors and it, it just, it's built into my system that you have to have a strong internet to do your job. And even though this job's not so much minute by minute, it's built into me. Okay, so the errors I want you to track as well. Uh, so that's pretty much from the beginning where I want you to, uh, you know, start, all right? So let's take a look at a spreadsheet here. I want to give you an idea of how you could build something yourself. Then I'm going to get out of the way and uh, leave you because I know this one is a little bit of a detailed topic. I'm going to try something a little different today, if you don't mind. I'm going to try to go like this and... <laughs> okay, I don't like that at all. Let me do something real quick here. Um, I was trying to make this bigger for you. Uh, I'm going to move it off to the side and I'll just step out of the way here so it uh, it can show on the screen. This is just a very, very simple spreadsheet, okay? So very, very simple, uh, not simple, but a very, very simple looking spreadsheet. Um, on the surface there, it has everything that we talked about. Notice at the top, I want to know my batting average, which which is just my win, wins versus losses. I want to know the size of my wins versus my losses. That's up here at the top. And then of course, if you're tracking along the way, you don't have to use this anymore. Your platform tells you your total wins versus losses. But notice what we did here. So we went through uh, and kind of built this in the same way that we taught this. Where did you find the trade? It was my own trade. I'm over here on the left-hand side. It was a trade that I found. It was a trade that I found from a group of friends, right? A trading group maybe I put together. It was a computer system that we had predetermined, maybe because some people like to pre-build their strategies. It was a scanner. We ran some sort of scan either in the platform or we had a system set up where we set up to tell us when certain strategies happen, okay? So you now we have a couple different things there that we can track. I can say that was my trade. I could take responsibility for that. You could change it and put up, you know, you, like I said, TV, social sentiment, things like that. That's that. Okay, entry time. Now this one is current, this actual sheet set up for day traders, but you would put your date. 
somewhere in there if you were building a spreadsheet. I bought it at 9.30 on a certain day, a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. We used to actually have the days over here. We don't, we don't do that anymore. Or they didn't do that after a while. Uh, so the time that you took the trade, right, could be the day that you took the trade. Believe it or not, the market is much different at 10 o'clock in the morning than it is at 12 o'clock in the afternoon. Night and day different, to be exact. Uh, the market is different in the last two to three days of the month and the first two to three days of the month versus the middle of the month, right? So after years of playing with this, you know that if you're going to take a trade at the end of the month and it loses, there's a good reason for that. So you want to know, uh, kind of track that along the way there as well. Okay, uh, what's the strategy? So this was the strategy section. You could uh, assign it a name. Maybe you had the super duper gap down strategy, right? I don't care what you call it. Uh, stock falls by 3%, I buy it in the morning, take my shot, see if it goes higher by later in the day. As simple as and dumb as that sounds, uh, that strategy is your own thing. You would use that. Another one, I buy stocks when they break above the 200 day moving average for the first time in over a year. Simple as that. You go in there and you name that thing the strategy, okay? And then um, exit. When did you exit the strategy? Did you exit at your profit target? Did you exit at your uh, stop loss? What happened? So very simply, all you would do is have a spreadsheet or have maybe Google Sheets or whatever it is that you're looking for. Put the day in there. It's, uh, what is it, October? Come on. October, what's the deal here? Oh, I messed it all up. So you put the day in there. My little number pad thing broke. Oh, it won't let me do it while I have it shown. Oh, man. Okay, so you put the date in there, you're gonna put the source of your trade, you put the stock in there, you're gonna put whether you bought it or you shorted it. If you're one of those traders, it's gonna have your strategy, the time frame you took it, and then your win loss, uh, win loss of course, on that one there. Why won't this work, man? Give me a second here. Uh, anyways, I can't change it. Okay, and so as you do that, you're gonna label it win loss, right? Or the system's gonna label it win loss. You put the shares that you bought, the shares that you sold. If you had any errors, errors are over here to the right, you can see. Early entry, late entry, things like that. You wanna track those sort of things and leave a comment for yourself. I used to leave all kinds of comments in this thing to let me know what I did. Um, if you're a longer term trader, you would set up something, maybe it's week to week. You bought a trade on a Monday, you sold it on a Tuesday, things like that. Maybe that's the case. If you're a longer term investor, uh, well, more longer term active trader, we'll call it, then you'd put it there, right? You would track something in a longer term perspective with dates and things like that. So uh, that's really sort of uh, old school and how uh, I used to do it uh, for trading there. Uh, and if you're gonna track your stats, these are some of the things that you wanna put on there. That's all I have for you. <laughs> so really, really simple there. Uh, Cobra says, off topic question, writing a covered call provides some protection from bearish movement. Uh, off, that, you're right, it is off topic, but uh, if you do write a covered call, it offers uh, at least a little bit of protection in the amount of the cr uh, premium that you um, collected. It doesn't offer protection in the sense that most people would say it, uh, but you did help lower your average cost, which technically offers a little bit of wiggle room. I won't call it protection. Uh, no options trader is going to say selling a covered call is protection. Uh, it's cost basis reduction, it's giving you a little breathing room, but it's not technically protection. You have the need, understand the need for a trading plan, but do you need an investing plan if you're a long-term investor? Yes! <laughs> Absolutely, Larry. Uh, that's what we do, that we put that stuff together for people for their long-term investments or their retirement investments and things like that. You absolutely need a plan. I've done so many videos on creating plans for the longer term investor. This week is sort of an odd thing for our class here. Just having some fun with some short term trading. You think the plan goal is always good to have written down for any investor. Why are you investing? What are you aiming for to invest? What's your criteria? Amen, financial investor. The office that we used to trade in, we would, uh, it's kind of silly, but the printer had this, it could print out square images. And what we would do, we had these little boxes, and so we would print out square images of goals, things that we had. Not like physical goals, but sometimes it was numerical goals, sometimes it was just to go home, spend more time with the family, and we would print these things, and the whole wall ended up being this collage of goals. And it sounds weird, but you'd, wake, you'd go in there every day and be like, all right, we're gonna get some stuff done today. It really made you feel good. 
Uh, so that was just a silly example, but of course every one of us had a plan. Um, actually, it used to work for a fund where they told us what the strategy was. We were the minions to execute on the strategy. So there was, it was awesome because part of uh, one side of us would put on the trades, the other side would take off the trades, and we took the human emotion out of it. And so I've done that with friends, even long distance, where we've both logged in to the same account and I did the same thing. Uh, I will put on the trades, you take them off, here's the reasons why I'm gonna put them on, here's the reasons why you're gonna take them off. And so my focus was only on finding the best possible entry. This person's uh, focus was only on getting out at the exact time he was supposed to get out. It took a lot of the stress off. Now there's computer systems for that and everything, you don't have to do that. But it's sort of like the um, accountability system with a, maybe a workout friend or something like that. It keeps you guys honest together. You guys, you know, pull your money together and uh, if you want to and uh, work together on it. So I, I thought it was a lot of fun. I, I loved it. I hope to, you know, include that some point uh, in the future, but uh, not at the moment. Can't do it. Anyways, hey, closing beat coming up later today. Do me a favor. Check us out on Twitter, tweeting stuff out, just write interesting things uh, about the stock market on a daily basis. Uh, the closing beat will come up at five o'clock today. Uh, and so uh, we've got a lot to cover on the closing beat and a lot of earnings coming out after the close. So we'll be on it. Thank you for watching. We're, tomorrow will be a really short dough show, by the way. Just gonna cover some of my favorite trading stories from mistakes I've made to watching people literally disappear. Like, I still don't know where they're at or if they're even alive, all because of trading. Uh, and then just interesting things you come across along the way. I'll share a few stories with you um, and uh, maybe we'll, call it a day. <laughs> so, all right, talk to you guys later. We'll be back at five o'clock. Enjoy. Why should you choose Jazz Wealth as your retirement or long-term investing service? Our portfolios are managed by us, not some faceless mutual fund manager. Our private classes will teach you everything about investing and getting your dough straight. Best of all, our fiduciary standard means your best interest comes before ours. Hey, wait! Before you go watch one of our other great videos, have you had a chance to see our new Fin Tips videos? They focus on one topic at a time, covering investing, personal finance, and anything that can quickly help you with your dough. Best of all, we'll keep it real short, because we know time is money. 